Right, a brief description about the Z-axis. This is the uh, Z-axis frame. As you can see, got uh, this is M6 threaded rod with a step motor and the extruder. Although when this is done, the extruder will be facing that way, but I was just showing this way for just a ease of use to so easily identify it in this short video. These here are drawer rails. These are just ordinary drawer rails you can buy from virtually any hardware store. They don't cost very much. And uh, what's great about these is they fit perfectly in the rails. So uh, the useful bearings is reduced considerably. However, these long ones are actually really good. I've accidentally bought uh, 65 bearings from the local bearing shop. Uh, they had it was the entire stock, and they only had three left, and so I took them. Just so it happens that they're absolutely perfect in size for this for my project. Uh, as I can, don't know if you can tell from here. They will sit roughly here and will roll on top of the rail. This with that rail here. So it will run on top of the rail here and be attached on here with zero freedom of movement. Great constraint, zero, uh, well, zero pullbacks. Uh, what else is there? Uh, you may remember on the now, if you remember on the required design for the rep strap, they had like uh, an arm which which kind of constrains the axis or z axis to a back plate. I'm using the same idea here. Although I'm not using a back plate, I'm just using just flat aluminium. Bought from the local hardware store, and I'll be using M8 or 608 bearings to constrain that down. They'll be constrained at this point, so it'll be uh, screwed from here, and we'll go down onto this aluminium here to constrain the movement so it doesn't wobble backwards and forwards even though with the 65 bearing along here it's constrained at that point and these two points of constraint so that it doesn't uh, give too much error this whole project does have some movement I grant you that but it is minuscule very minuscule uh, that's only because show you quickly that's only because of the fact that the only one standstill rod. The other end does not have a standstill rod so it can move backwards and forwards, rocket backwards and forwards there, and up and down. Well, the up and down part is going to be held down with uh, gravity, with the z-axis bolted on. It's actually going to be bolted onto this, through, onto these two thermal inserts, uh, originally you would have the camera on, on here, but I take the camera off of course, and I'm just using the thermal inserts for bolting the z-axis onto. Um, the other part of having the uh, extruder done as well is it needs to be balanced on top of the this axis, y-axis, as well as on the z-axis itself, so this doesn't twist and bend. Well, this is just about it. Uh, this is my red strap project, well, 3D printer project. This is just a regular wooden frame that I've uh, constructed from wood from the local hardware store. Uh, that I just asked them to chop up some wood for me on their chop saw and said, oh yeah, fine. And so they've done that for me. It uses two A4 flat bed scanners, which I've managed to get from Tramie for two for five dollars. Uh, absolute brilliant concern that you get drive mechanisms, motors, belts, 
and end stops all in one. When we all together, this would be well over $200 New Zealand. But, quite a great deal. Two old fabric scanners for $5. I couldn't pass it up. So I'll use it for my project. Thanks for watching.